What's up everyone? I'm Raina and on today's video we are going to be talking about one of my absolutely favorite things about makeup if you haven't been able to already tell by the rest of my makeup videos. It's eyeshadow. Um, I'm going to be going super in depth and explaining and creating how like creating an eyeshadow look. Um, basically I'm going to call it anatomy of an eyeshadow look um, because it's really not intricate but there are definitely steps to execute the perfect eyeshadow look and I want to be able to go through everything when it comes down to eye shape tools colors placement what have you we're getting all into the nitty-gritty um, so I'm super excited to talk about that with you um, and before we get into that um, I want to go ahead and thank you in advance for being here I super appreciate you um, and I'm trying to get to 15 likes in this video um, so if you could really quick go ahead and hit like and subscribe down at the bottom I'd super appreciate it also if you want to share invite all your friends and family in to hang out with me I would super appreciate that too um, all that being said if you want to grab a pen and paper so you can take notes do that grab some water and let's get it going made you look nothing changed but we had to get that transition there anyway so step one determine your eye shape everyone is different we're all snowflakes and that we're all special in our own way nobody is gonna have the same eye shape nobody's gonna have the same space in between their eyes what have you so the first thing that we have to do before we create an eyeshadow look is determine our eye shape. And so there are a couple different options. Um, they are almond, descending eyelid, shallow smooth, deep set eyelid or hooded, uh, prominent eyelid and deep set crease. Um, and I have a couple examples that are gonna correlate to each of those eyeshadow shapes to kind of help you guys get a better idea of what those exactly look like. Um, so the first is gonna be Almond. And with Almond, we have the lovely Beyonce. Um, so as you can see, like she's got that really lovely kind of arch up top um, where it is completely even from the outer to the inner. So you still have that almond shape on the top and the bottom flat across. When it comes to descending eyelid, we have Miss Nicole Richie. So what makes this descending is you can see on the outer portion of her eye, her eyelid tends to go down. Um, I, in my mind, and I know be, from like dramaturgy, cause I am that person, um, a lot of times the descending eyelid was really popular in the 1920s, kind of like that flapper girl, where the eyes you tend to pull down. Um, so it just makes you look kind of you know, sad girl vibes. Um, so with a lot of the placement, it's gonna go up a lot higher, but we'll get to that later. Uh, for shallow smooth, we have Miss Wakwafina. Um, just that really lovely eye shape where there isn't a prominent crease or really a crease at all, um, but it's just a really nice kind of even, even lid from top to bottom. Then the deep set eyelid or hooded and the reason why I'm like kind of laughing and I do that be is because hooded just sounds so aggressive um, and so I'm trying to get better about calling it a deep set eyelid just because I don't know like hooded doesn't sound nice and your eyes are beautiful if you have a deep set lid your eyes are beautiful anyway that being said we have Miss Carly Kloss I mean hello she's freaking stunning are you kidding um, so if you have the hooded eye, you know what I mean. But so when your eyes are open, that means you can see really none of your actual lid. Now when you blink, it's gonna be more of like a flirt when you have the color on the lid here. But mostly all you're really gonna see is that upper portion of the eye. Next we have Miss Octavia Spencer for the prominent eyelid, which is who I'm the most jealous of. And anytime I have someone in front of me doing their makeup, if they have a prominent eyelid, I tell them all the time about how jealous I am because they have all that real estate. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine if I had that eye shape? I mean, I'd have like eyeshadow to like my freaking forehead. I probably would still be blending here like days later just because there's so much space. Okay, and finally we have Miss Lady Gaga, who is our deep set crease example. And I actually have a deep set crease. And what that means is that basically my crease is fairly far back 
and my lid you can only really see a little bit of it um, I probably also would be considered more of like an almond shaped as well but Beyonce has a little bit more lid space available than I do so it's very very small so I have to kind of take it up a little bit higher when I'm applying my eyeshadow but those are the various eye shapes that you can choose from. So if you wanna go back and take a look, go ahead and I will BRB. Step two, tools. You're only as good as your tools. I'll say that again. You're only as good as your tools. When it comes to doing makeup, it's all about working smarter, not harder. And ensuring that you have the right tools will ensure that your product applies evenly, you don't have to spend a million hours blending trying to make the eyeshadow move, and it's just going, it, they just do what you need it to do. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, and trust me, I've, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I definitely was that person that for years, literal years, I had, you know, those packages of like the, the sponge tip applicators, and I, and I go back and I look at pictures, and I mean, I got the job done. Now, that's probably why I'm such an excessive blender to this day, because I'm just so used to, like when I taught myself, because I'm completely self-taught. When I taught myself how to apply my eyeshadow, I mean, I had to work it out, you know, to the point that like my fingers almost bled. Not really, but you know what I mean. Um, but once I graduated to the right tools, me applying my makeup went so much faster and so much easier and I got so much less frustrated because I was using the correct stuff to blend and to apply. Um, so here's a grouping of my favorite eyeshadow tools. The first being um, a 224 or just a big fluffy brush. This is going to be used when applying a transition shade or if you need a little bit of extra blending power. Um, it's really, really soft. Um, but it's not too big and that it's gonna like take over the entire lid. For example, the Morphe M501, don't mind it, it's dirty. Um, this is going to be too big. Um, this, I mean, is not gonna get really anything done because it's too soft towards the edge where this is, it's still fairly fluffy and fairly loose, but it's still dense enough where it's gonna get in here and it's gonna move the way you need it to move. Next I have, I put, in, I put in this brush because you could use it for a couple of different things, but I have a 217. So the difference between the 217 and the 224 is that the 217 is a little bit more dense than the 224. See what I mean? So if I'm like pushing, it doesn't go down as easy where this one does. It like the bristles kind of disperse a little bit more. This you could use for a transition shade, but you would just want to make sure that you're blending as much as possible because the more dense a brush is, the less easy it's going to move around. So this is something that you could use for blending in the crease, like laying in there, but you could also apply on the lid if you wanted to, which then graduates into a 239 or a flat, dense shader brush. Um, so this is gonna lay really nicely in that inner corner because, I mean, if you look and see, it sits really nicely just right below that crease line, so it's gonna get the coverage that I need here, and there's definitely some like leftover shadow on it. And then we're gonna get to my favorite eyeshadow brush of all time, 221. It is a smaller shader brush. It's still fairly dense, but still will move comparison to the 224 and then the comparison with this and the 217 okay the reason why I love the 221 so much is because it just gets in those nooks and crannies I mean if here let me do it here if you look you can see my the brush is like completely folded into my crease so that means I'm gonna get that really nice application shape but it's also gonna help me keep those darker shades closer to my lash line because that's really, really important, which we'll, we'll touch on later. But it's really gonna help keep things low. And this is also great for blowing out that lower lash line. This is gonna be a little too big. So you're gonna get a lot, if you have some, um, some leftover shadow down here, the way that it lays, 
here. This probably would be easier. The way that it lays, you could see that I probably would have some transfer on that cheekbone, which I mean, would, do, would you really expect me not to have some shadow down here? I mean, really, if I wanted to, I probably would. But most of the time, I like to keep it up a little bit higher. I don't necessarily want my shadow down to my cheekbone. For now, anyway. Okay, step three is determining the correct eyeshadow colors for your eyeshadow look. Um, for this example, I'm going to be using the Nude Model Palette from MAC Cosmetics, but this is... This is good for any kind of color palette. I mean, I've done hot pinks, purples, blues. You can, you know, mix all of those together in the correct way. But for the sake of this being easier, I'm gonna pick something that is a little bit more nude and maybe a little bit not as scary. Um, maybe one day we'll go to like anatomy of like a bonkers eyeshadow look, but today is not that day. So the first thing um, that we want to pick when creating a look is the transition shade. A transition shade is the shade that we use that we put, that we dust basically all over the eye that all of the other eyeshadow colors are going to blend into. And typically it's a shade that is the color of our, color of our skin or a little bit darker, just to add a little bit more depth in that crease. Um, and so that would be something like this shade right here called Teta Tint, which, uh, which is this really pretty like, oh, there's the rest of my room, haha. -ha. Um, which is like this really pretty peachy brown shade. Um, I tend to consider myself a little bit more peach. Um, so something around that is gonna be really pretty. Um, but I've actually used Teta Tint on darker skin tones and it looks lovely. Next uh, is the highlight. And regardless of eye shape, you are always going to want an under brow highlight. It doesn't have to be super, super bright, but it needs to, to be that brightness that's going to drive up the height of the eyebrow. I joke that as I'm aging, I'm finding that I'm starting to lose elasticity when it comes to my skin right here. Um, because to be quite honest, if I could get enough Botox, well, I just want to look mildly surprised. So if I could just raise it up a little bit, look how much better, not better, but better if we're being honest. But I would like that so much more because then you can see a little bit more of my eyelid. Basically, the under brow highlight is like Botox without the needles. How great is that? So you wanna use a shade that's something kind of like this shade right here called Shroom that is gonna be bright enough, but also not be too bright and that it's going to like kind of take over. But see how Shroom, like you see that brightness, but it's, ooh, as my camera just goes crazy. But if anything, it just kind of like picks up a little bit of the light versus like there's nothing on this hand so same thing when it comes up here it's gonna give you a little bit of that brightness but nothing too bright now I do tend to enjoy a brighter highlight on my eye but I wouldn't do that on somebody else um, but I also because I'm a monster I also typically do like two shades up top because again I cannot stress enough how much I freaking love eyeshadow man like it's my favorite just a lot. Anyway, um, the next shade that we want to focus on is the outer third or the crease shade. So that's going to be something that is going to create that definition in the crease and the outer third area here. Now that's something that we would use like, like this shade for, you could get into these really like indigo shades down here where it's really going to give you and like, close off the edge of the eye, but also again, as I mentioned, give you that definition up top. The thing that we have to be careful of is how high and how far in it goes. And that's what I'll touch on when I'm talking about um, placements for each of the shapes later, um, because that is very important because that can really change the look of your eye shape. And whether you're doing it on purpose or not, that's something that we just need to keep in mind. Um, and the outer third increase shade also you can use down at the bottom as well, just to kind of wrap it all the way around. I'm a big fan of that, um, where it's just going to connect the top and the bottom just so it looks even more almond. Um, typically when we're trying to create that cat eye shape that's been so popular for forever, that's what we're doing because we want to create more of an almond shape even if we don't technically have one. So we would just use that right around there. 
Um, and then the last eyeshadow shade that we need to consider is the inner third lid shade. So that is something that, or, or the colors that we would use for something like that, it's gonna be these really pretty colors right in here. Um, usually it's something that's gonna have a bit of shimmer to it, anything that's going to create more light in this inner part of our eye. Um, and the reason why we do that is because it's going to create space, as I cover my mouth, but it's gonna create space away from your nose. So like my eyes are fairly closer together, so I want as much brightness right in here to drive my eyes apart. Um, but if we are, if we were doing like a traditional smoky eye, like classic smoky eye with like that dark, dark brown or almost, you know, black, we would still add some brightness right in here so our eyes don't look closed because we want our eyes to look as open as possible. Um, so, and that, I mean, it doesn't always have to, um, have to have shimmer, but I always like to pick a shade, even if it is matte, it's going to be fairly light just so I can drive my eyes up and just make them look more open and more awake. Even um, if I'm a sleepy girl, which I am a lot of the time. I had to throw my hair up since now you're going to actually be like seeing how I apply the eyeshadow. So I figured just pop that right up there. So regardless of eye shape for the next few steps. They're all gonna be the same. Um, the first is we're gonna start with um, an eyeshadow base. I'm using the 24 hour eye base that has already been applied all over my lid from tip to tip. Um, and so I did that a while ago, so it's nice and dry already. But so we're gonna start with that highlight shade. So I'm gonna go in with that shroom that I showed you before with the 239. And we're just gonna pick that up and we're gonna place that right underneath the eyebrow. Then, sorry, I should have had that ready. Then, and this is again, regardless of eye shape, we're gonna go in with that transition shade. Um, we're gonna use the 224, that really nice fluffy brush, and I'm gonna pick up that, you know, the my shade but better color, which is the tete tint. So I'm picking it up there, and this is gonna go in the crease, and then we're just gonna kind of windshield wiper and swirl our way to blended town. And regardless if you have the deep set lid or the hooded shape or the shallow smooth, you're still gonna be doing the same thing and it's going to be in the same place because that's just basically the center of our eye, whether our eyebrow is closer to our lid or there is no crease at all, we still need that eyeshadow in the center to look, to be blended into. And this is basically I can't believe I haven't said this before, but when it comes to eyeshadow, when you're putting down the progression of colors, think of it like a bonfire, right? The deepest shades are going to be towards the bottom, closest to the fire, and then they're going to progressively get lighter and lighter and lighter until you're up at the top with the most opaque shadow that you have. So this is just, this is gonna be the most opaque or the lightest, and this, this is just the step down, and then we're gonna go darker and darker and darker and darker until we get to the bottom. Easy enough, right? Okay, first I'm gonna show you the placement of the crease and the outer third shade for the almond shape eye. Um, and I'm gonna be using um, this shade right here. It's called, oh, it's espresso. Um, so, Almond shades are fairly easy when it comes to application. But so I'm gonna, I'm using the 221. I'm just gonna pick up a little tiny bit. And then we are gonna take that right here. And then when that same windshield wiper and swirl motion, we're just gonna kind of pull that in. Now, if you have a smoother, um, not a deeper set crease like I do, you could bring that a little bit further in and I wouldn't really close the eye.
Then you can go up a little bit higher. You can take that darkness up a little bit higher. Okay. And then we're gonna take ah, the 239 and I'm gonna be applying this shade right here, which is Drop the Robe. And just apply it in that inner third area here. And I'm gonna take that 221 again, no new product on it. just blend those edges together. Okay. And then I'm also going to take that 221 again to go back into the espresso. And then I'm just going to take that right under my lash line and that outer third and just kind of connect it to the top. Just to really accentuate that nice almond edge. showing you how to apply shadow for a descending eyelid. Don't mind this side, this is from, this is from the almond. Um, I'm gonna be using the shades Espresso and Drop the Robe with the application. Um, I ha already have on my eye base, if you, if you skipped ahead, um, if, you, if you didn't, don't mind this, but I already have my transition shade and my highlight shade because that's gonna be the same for every single eye look. But with the descending, um, it's all about if my eyes were a little bit lower like this, kind of like that. Um, Nicole Richie's right there, you should be able to see her. Um, but so if it's down like this, we wanna keep more of the drama up high. Now when we put the liner on, we would follow the lid all the way down, the, like the, um, the line of the lid, follow it all the way down. But we wanna keep most of the drama from the shadow up a little bit higher because we don't wanna pull that eyelid even more down to make it look like, you know, the, the sad eye from, from Casper. But so I'm gonna pick up that espresso on the 221 and I'm going to focus that up here. So kind of see where I place that shadow, that's where it's gonna go. I'm almost kind of pulling it. If I wanted to use my eyebrow as kind of like a gauge, I'm gonna pull that up. So I'm also gonna kind of blend a little bit more into the crease. So I'm really leaving this area of my eye alone. Okay. I'm gonna go in with that 239 to pick up that drop the robe shade. Twenty-one again, no new product. And we're gonna blend that out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back into that espresso and then kind of connect this. And I'm pulling up towards my eyebrow edge. And I'm bringing it in. And I'm really just trying to lift So if you can already see in comparison to the almond application, this is pulling my eye up. 
I mean, this is something that I could do just with my regular eyeshadow if I wanted to, but if my lid was a little bit further down like that, already it's lifting it up a little bit more. So it doesn't, it's not enhancing the edge of that eyelid, it's pulling it up so it looks really lifted and really pointed. And this is just kind of like enhancing the angle of that almond, that edge right here, where this is just really pulling up and out. Okay, and the next shape we're gonna be talking about is this shallow smooth. Now this is probably gonna be easiest for me to show you. I'm probably gonna tilt my head back a fair amount because when I do that, it really smooths out my crease. So you'll kind of get a little bit of a better idea since I don't actually have that eye shape. But the whole thing about a shallow smooth is just there is little to no crease. Um, same as before, you are still going to, regardless of shape, you are still gonna have that under brow highlight and that transition shade. The only difference is I'm gonna go in with that espresso shade and we're gonna apply it in this outer third area here and we're really gonna kind of bring it up a little bit higher to create that depth. So this is a little bit smaller. And really focusing on that swirl and that windshield wiper motion. You can bring it out if you want to, but the main focus is really driving that drama right in here. Take it up a little bit higher. Okay, and I'm gonna go in with that drop the robe shade and apply that in the inner corner. Take that 221, no new product on it. Up a little bit more product just because I want to make that area as smoky as possible. And then when it comes to the bottom, you want to use as little shadow as you can because you don't want to close the eye. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna drag that really close to that lash line and really only focus mostly kind of like liner down there, but you can use a little bit of shadow, but you really wanna, only wanna focus it in this outer third part here because you don't wanna close that inner part of the eye, the inner third of the eye. Now I'm just being excessive. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the deep set eyelid. We're gonna be doing that on this side, deep set are coated. Um, and with this one, you basically are gonna keep everything down a little bit further or you're going to create your own crease above your natural fold, okay? So we're, like I said all the other times, I already have my uh, under brow highlight and my transition shade because that's gonna happen regardless. Now we're gonna go in with the espresso on the 221. And I wanna show you kind of like the difference of both. So you can either keep it really low. So if my, if I kind of like tilt my eye up back a little bit, you can kind of see what I mean. So you get the drama here still, but it's gonna be a little bit more of a flirt when it comes to the drop the robe shade. That inner corner, the inner third. I'm just gonna blend those two together. So it's gonna look more of like a, you know, I can't, I can't blink like that. <laughs> but so it'll be like a little flash, you know what I mean? Just like a little flirt. Or, you can take that espresso shade. So here is my natural crease. We're gonna take it up. Okay. 
I'm not taking it all the way in though, because if I do that, then it's gonna make our eyes disappear into the back of our head. We don't want that to happen. But this way, you get more drama. See, not that hard. If you're doing a cut crease, you would do the same thing where you would just create a new crease above your natural fold. It's not that hard. Okay, and if you wanted to, you can go right underneath here and kind of connect it. You can bring it in a little bit, but maybe not all the way over. Just look for a little bit of drama. Just a bit. See? And then if you could see the difference between the shallow smooth and then the hooded eye, this is gonna be a little bit lower because we don't want to overwhelm the lid where this is gonna go up a little bit higher where we want a little more oomph from the lid. Next, we're gonna be talking about the prominent eyelid shade. Um, and I already have, just like with all the other eyeshadow shapes, I have my um, under brow highlight already done and my transition shade, just because that's gonna be on there regardless of the shape. Um, and with the prominent eyelid, you can just go ham, just go nuts, because there's so much space. So, so, so much space. So I'm gonna pretend like I have one. Um, and I'm gonna go in with that 221 and that espresso. We're gonna start in that outer third and really take it, take it in. So we can really make the, ooh, my eyelids hurt. <laughs> um, we can really take it into that crease and bring it all the way in. Really focusing on that windshield wiper and swirl motion. We're gonna go in with that drop the robe shade in that inner corner. And I am gonna pick up a little bit more of that espresso. And then we can take it along the bottom here. And you could really bring it in and then wrap it around. Now, because my eyes are smaller, because I don't actually have a prominent eyelid, um, my eye is gonna look like it's closed a little bit more. Um, so I would just even that out a bit. But. Basically, just go to town and blend like an insane person if you have a prominent eyelid. And just know, I'm so jealous, I'm <laughs> so jealous. And finally, we're gonna talk about my eye shape, the deep set crease. Um, I already have my under brow highlight and my transition shade already done because regardless of shape, we would be doing that anyway. So I'm gonna go in with that espresso on the 221 and I'm just gonna place that this outer third area here. And we're just gonna kind of pull it in a little bit. I'm not gonna take it all the way in here like I did with the prominent. That came in a little bit farther. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more out here. And I am kind of like pulling it in, but the majority of the placement of the color is gonna be out here. Okay, I'm gonna go in with the drop the robe shade. espresso and then just blend the two together pick 
up some more espresso and then I'm gonna apply on the bottom here. And I'm only really stopping here. I'm not bringing it all the way over. Now, if I were to take that, like you can kind of tell that my eye a little bit disappears, like my eyelid disappears if I take it too far over here. Here, I, you can see where the darkness is, but I still have more prominence in my eyelid here. So that's why with a, a deeper set crease, you wanna keep the darkness more on the outer part of the eye and a little bit lower. Otherwise, it's just gonna, the lid just completely disappears in the back of the head. And then I also don't want to close my eye anymore. So that's why I keep a lot of the darkness out here. Unless I am willing to do like a brighter inner corner you know, pop of uh, brightness here to really make sure my eye stays open. But just for easiness, I just keep it here. And so that way I'm also creating more of an almond shape out here and we're pulling up. So, yay. All right guys, that's it. Uh, I hope you found this super informative and helpful. Um, if you would like to see more videos like this, drop that down in the comments below. I would super appreciate it. Um, my eyelids are gonna be so mad at me for a couple of days just from like taking off product, putting on product, a whole bunch of different times. But it was it was 100% worth it. If y'all got anything out of it, that's all I want, that's all I need in my life. So um, I'm gonna end this video like how I end every video and ask, how did you show up for yourself today? I'll go first. Um, I meditated and journaled this morning. I'm really trying to keep up with my self-care activities and making sure I'm really grounded is super important. Um, I let myself sleep in today um, because I'm tired and you know, sometimes I just wanna sleep late. So I let myself do it. So yay for me. Um, let me know in the comments how you showed up for yourself or is there if there's anything that you need to have being up on, I'd love to hype you up on that stuff. Um, you can also go to my website, raynut.com, and book um, a consultation with me, and we can do this one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so we can actually fully decide what type of eye shape that you have, and I can show you exactly on your eye um, how everything can go on. That'd be super cool. Um, and thank you guys so much for being here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And, you know, dink me out to the universe. Appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.